Very frequently I'm being asked, a spec, how do I create a baller navy that will destroy anything that we find amongst the stars? Well, first of all, we're going to go and teach you today how to build a baller navy. The problem is that baller navy has most likely um, have a little bit of a track record on it because it's going to be a while until said baller navy is going to be done, at least from the start of the game. Uh, of course, at the start of the game, we start off with our three corvettes and that is effectively our starting position let's have a quick look here selecting the fleet yada yada go to little ship details and we find ourselves our core components armaments and utilities as you can see this is all tier one we don't even have any utilities yet and this by right there is something that we need to keep our eye on however uh, the game specs your ships for the strongest possible items available in terms of sheer firepower this does not this doesn't necessarily mean that you will be doing um, a lot of damage with this again the game creates stuff based on firepower by itself in terms of a raw volume um, so yeah how do we change this how do we effectively look at our at our ships and basically be like hey let's let's change things up a little bit welcome to the ship designer the ship designer of course is down in the outlier on the left side it's called this you can also of course hit the f9 button in order to get there but in the meantime uh yeah the ship designer is where everything happens at the start of the game we start out with our basic corvette it will have a random name in its design and has all sorts of values attached to it it has its weapons in this particular case it has a flak battery a small mass driver and another small mass driver we can always put a red laser on there that's that's not a problem but yeah um that by itself is is basically our base we get two shields we get a little bit of armor we get a reactor a hyperdrive our basic thrusters and a radar system now all these items combined does not create in fact captain planet no we do get ourselves our core vet on the side of course we have our production values how much it will cost us in upkeep how long it will take to build this this is in days of course how much it will cost to build this item how much power it has right now it is at zero this will always be at the number based on the amount of items that you have slotted in because yes every item uh has a upkeep in power the amount of hull points that it has the amount of armor and its amount of shields all of these th these three tallied up together is the total value of the ship's power there is no such thing as, as uh, targeting only thrusters or targeting the weapon systems or anything like that no we every single ship is statted with a raw value and you're going to need to destroy the hull in order to kill it sure you can penetrate armor you can penetrate shields but there are of course weapons that allow you to bypass this in general then is the evasion which is the chance of evading enemy fire for corvettes this is exceptionally high and we can crank it all the way up to 90 if we have the right components it's damage output and of course it's special value which in this particular case is its sensor range and the ability to suppress pirates now uh, that by itself is relatively straightforward, I would say. Uh, for instance, our flak battery has a uh, energy usage of five, so we could, for instance, say, "Hey, uh, let's build, uh, let's click this item and let's build a flak battery on there." If we keep an eye on our damage value, you'll see that it will go up if we put another. Um, flak battery on there now flak batteries and sentinel point defenses, which are our basic starter ones, are anti ship weapons and anti-missile weapons and i'm not talking about anti-ship weapons in the classic sense no i'm talking about fighter craft they can in fact hit other ships but will have a little bit of trouble with that the only reason why the game puts them on your ship at the start of the game is because the sheer damage output that they have which in this particular case is a total of 3.0 on average damage for instance, our mass drivers do 2.2.8. Uh, if, for instance, we put a red laser on there, uh, we do it as so. And then, of course, that damage value goes down. But as you can see, there is a special modifier below the average. And that is how much damage it does to particular systems it is going to counter. If you, for instance, have an enemy that uses a lot of armor then using lasers is the way to go. You can ablate the, those armor plates quite quickly and penetrate into the hull and then destroy the hull. The small mass driver is the exact opposite where you will do additional damage to shields and less damage to armor. 
and of course the flak battery in this particular case has a reduction in army damage which means it's great to penetrate shields so what does this mean in the grand scheme of things it means that knowledge is everything a ship that has the highest possible of value in terms of raw damage output is not necessarily the best ship to field let's say for instance we attack a fleet that is purely using armor and that is definitely something that can happen then we're going to need to use shield uh, anti-shield weapons which in this particular case are lasers if they're using a lot of missiles then we definitely want to go for point defense which is what sentinel point defense obviously does but if we uh, have an enemy that uses a reasonable amount of shields uh, then using the flak battery is kind of nice however using the small laser in this particular case it does plus 50 percent damage which in this particular case would be a 1.07 ish and then we would actually do uh, more damage than the flak battery by itself so uh, at the start of the game it's probably not a good idea to go for the flak battery now first of all uh, we're going to need to do something really important here when it comes to designing our very first ship that is not being given to us by the game as you can see the corvette that we have here is a auto generated ship that is quote unquote auto best once again auto best means the most firepower that it can field for its power and that right there is something that is problematic because that is clearly not the case so down here we got the auto generate design button let's take that off shall we let's go to a new design and let's build a corvette cool we're now in an empty sequence here and we get to select our section by clicking on the button now we have three types of hull here and those all um, are set up in a way of what kind of high slots you have now high slots are the weapon slots in the game the utility slots for every ship uh at least for every section is always the same uh, there is no variation there at least for the corvette for some of the later designs especially for the cruisers uh, i think the destroyer the destroyers have them as well the battleships well, every single design is not a corvette basically we are allowed to pick multiple slots but we'll go over that shortly so in this particular case we have the missile boat the interceptor and the picket ship now, right now, we have the picket ship. That is, of course, the one with the point defense slot on there. But for the start of the game, we don't want that. We want the interceptor. Why do we want the interceptor? Because it does not have a point defense slot in the highs. Um, what that means is, is we can put any basic uh, weapon type in that top area and basically roll with that. At that point, we can just auto-complete our ship. It will automatically fill in the low slots, which in this particular case are two shields and one armor, and we are good to go for our fleet. Now, is this going to be a good setup to take down your first enemy? Well, that's the thing. You don't know at this point. You don't know enough about the enemy, because the enemy also has this, uh, this access to the same components. Now, the AI will generally go for the auto-best solution, but it does not necessarily mean that it will be... Uh, that, that it will be easy to counter due to the differences in tech level. So let's say we got an enemy that is using nothing but deflectors. In this particular case, we want to have a ship that uh, uses quite a lot of shield damage. Um, obviously, they won't be able to field one because they won't have the right reactor. So let's put this nano composite armor back in here. But overall, this design right here is actually quite decent versus um, a armor setup. Mainly because we will get a 50% bonus to all... Uh, sorry, the shield setup, we will get a 50% bonus to all shields, uh, which in this particular case means that we will do be doing a reasonable amount of firepower. Uh, you kind of need to do all the math in your head. There is no real uh, screen anywhere where it says, hey, this is how much damage you will be doing to shields. This is how much damage you'll be doing to armor, yada, yada. Let's hope that the Diplo update basically gives you a rundown that says, hey, this is the kind of ships that the enemy has. This is how much damage you will do to them, etc., etc. But that's something that we can hope for in the future now let's say that the enemy brings nothing but armor onto the field now armor is great because it does not cost any power they're just plates that are slapped onto the side and will give you additional armor points however now our mass drivers are no longer going to be very useful so we're going to need to slap only red lasers on this bad boy in order to ablate all this armor now Let's say that we have somebody next door and we need to figure out what they have and what is generally a good idea here is to uh, figure out, uh, try to get either border access or put a listening post on the border and then figure out what they have by constantly looking over towards their space, pausing the game when you see an enemy ship and then clicking on it like this 
and just hit this button and then you can see the layout of the ship and then adjust your fleet accordingly. Once again, having a powerful fleet does not necessarily mean that you are at the advantage. Now, how does this actually translate to the late game? Because uh, you, we want to talk about those baller fleets that we were talking about earlier. Uh, how do we get those? Well, let's jump into the future and see where we end up. Let's talk a little about the destroyers, cruisers, and of course, the battleships. Maybe even Titans, but that's only when you have Apocalypse. So we're back here at our UNE Core Worlds. We have uh, advanced into the future. This is clearly not the same map, by the way, FYI, just so you're aware. And we can take a look at our ships. Let's take a look at what we have available to our fleets in our ship designer. Now, ship designs by themselves are relatively straightforward. Um, in the late game, what you're going to be looking at, you're going to be looking at dark matter reactors, side jumps, whatnot, dark matter thrusters, etc. However, we said that we were going to talk about destroyers, so that we're going to be doing shortly. But first of all, we need to talk about the transition of corvettes to torpedo corvettes. Yes, torpedo corvettes, because they are exceptionally powerful and incredibly useful. Let's build a new design here, shall we? Let's build a new Corvette, because in the mid to late game, um, the missile boat becomes a far more usable platform for the Corvette in the terms of sheer damage output. Sure, they will have very high evasion, uh, up to 90% in this particular case, but we're going to go through all these items because clearly you're not going to have side jump drive all the way down to the uh, early game. So what do we usually have here? Well, we can look to our obsolete components, and what we usually have with this is the Space Torpedo. But the Space Torpedo does a ridiculous amount of damage. Um, space Torpedoes, in this particular case, do up to 265. We put a Devastator Torpedo in there, uh, we get up to 445. And this is basically something that we can unleash to the enemy in very large volumes when we have large amounts of Corvettes. And usually point defense will be overwhelmed and at that point they're going to be slammed with massive amounts of damage. Especially with the 100% shield penetration and armor damage means a lot of that will go straight into the hull. Now in this particular case you also want to uh, put a supplement item on there. Let's say that we want to put a... Um, Let's say we want to put a phase disruptor on there. It penetrates shields, it penetrates armor. For these sort of ships that are going to be spending a lot of time at point-blank range, it is quite good. And then, of course, we have our, uh, our standard armor and shield. And still the same rule applies if the enemy is using a lot of anti-armor weapons or a lot of anti-shield weapons. Counter accordingly. Anti-armor, go for shields. Anti-armor, go for... Uh, Anti-shields, go for armor. Yada yada. Actually, um, yeah, anti-shields uh, go for armor, anti-armor go for shields. Yeah, that's the mantra right here. And there's a whole wide selection of these, of course. Now, the one thing that we do need to keep in the back of our heads is that certain types of components do cost certain types of resources. Now, I've basically put all the base resources on right now. But let's say, for instance, we get to tier uh, 5 here for our jump drive or our thrusters uh, i think it's relevant no, it's only relevant for the utility slots in this particular case but let's say that we have advanced shields on our ships now as you can see immediately there will be a cost icon being put on there for um, what it would cost in uh, strategic resources if we put hyper shields on there for instance we will see that there is going to be a cost for that for uh, certain strat resources strategic resources are not only used for high-end materials they're also used to build new ships so if i for instance auto complete this and you see that i have the dark matter reactor on there as well as the dark matter thruster they will cost dark matter now of course you need to tangle with a fallen empire in order to get these but please be aware that certain weapon types so for instance if you put the interceptor on there and i give you uh, gamma lasers and stuff like that they will cost a very low amount of crystals but it's still something that you need in order to uh, use them so in this particular case it would be moats let's see what it is for the storm fires storm fires is moats as well any sort of kinetic weapons is moats uh, phase disruptors in this particular case kinetic and of course plasma weapons which are great versus armor but terrible versus shield use gas so that's something you want to keep in mind when you're designing your fleet do you have the right strategic resources in stock and if so then go ahead and build whatever you 
want. Now the Corvette itself uh, in the late game always have a small fleet of these of at least 15 patrolling your trade routes and uh, that would be good. So let's take a look at the Destroyer. The Destroyer is a, a patroller and a dedicated support craft. Now it comes in all sorts of flavors. For instance, the Picket Design, which has a ton of point defense on it. Perfect for ships uh, in ship-to-ship -ship combat when there is a lot of missiles on the field. If the enemy has a lot of missiles on their craft, putting a ton of point defense on these ships is usually a good idea. Uh, they can shoot down any sort of ships, and that right there is something you want to have. Um, you kind of wonder by yourself, so what happens when our ships are flying close to the enemy? What kind of weapons should we use? Well, we have a, four, a whole array of stuff we can use. For instance, the Phase Disruptor, uh, which is 100 damage and, uh, to shields as well as armor. But there's something else here that you're going to need to know. And that is this right here, which is the Combat Computer, which comes in all sorts of flavors. You start off with the basic Combat Computer, which has a Picket Tactic, which means that the ship will advance to close range and then in try to intercept the enemy. Now, as the game progresses, you will start unlocking all these combat computers, and each combat computer will have their own behavior attached to it. For instance, the advanced combat computer has the picket uh, uh, variant, but it also has the line variant and the artillery variant. And this applies to pretty much every single uh, variant that is available in the game. So, picket we already went over, that's uh, close point blank range. The line, however, which means the ship will hold its advance and uh, hold formation, which means it will try to stay with the rest of the uh, capital ships, maybe cruisers, maybe battleships, and hold formation there, which is great for point defense systems because it means that it can just hang out around the large soft targets and then take out um, any uh, sort of uh, combat items that are coming in, missiles and such. And of course, we have the artillery which will means it will stay at long range and fire its long range weapons on the target. Which in this particular case could be, for instance, the artillery bow, which means that we can attach some long range weapons on this. Like, for instance, the kinetic artillery, which has a range of 120, which is one of the longest in the game. Now, these sort of combat computers synergize quite well with some of the other ships that are available. I'll give you an example, for instance, let's say we have a uh, advanced combat computer on artillery which means that we will get a bonus to weapon fire rate and weapon uh, range which means we'll get a 10 percent bonus to this which means that we will have a range of 132 and let's say that we have a battleship with that and the battleship only has large slots on there and we fill this out with kinetic artillery again this may not be the best option in any scenario but it's still something you want to keep in mind but uh, we put the artillery modifier on there and basically the destroyers will hang around at the same range as the battleships and take out any missiles that come in. At least if you've set them up as such. Once again, as I mentioned, no ship setup is an all-rounder that will work perfectly in every single scenario. Know what you're up against and counter accordingly. Okay? Okay. Good. Let's talk again about the cruiser and let's talk about the uh, the um, auxiliary slots. Auxiliary slots are items that you can research in the game or find by some sort of event, etc. And basically allow you to upgrade your ship using various things. So at its base we have the afterburner. The afterburner, what it does, it increases the speed of your ship. So in this particular case, this destroyer is 318. We add a afterburner on top of that. As you can see, it is now 331. We add an advanced afterburner, it is even faster. Why would we ever want to use afterburners when our fleets are uh, zooming over the map? Every single fleet will always move at the pace of the slowest ship in the fleet. So let's say we have a Titan, which is of course only available in the Apocalypse expansion, but it has three of the uh, auxiliary slots, and we put a bunch of afterburners in there. It means that the speed of this ship will always be 286. That means it will zoom around at a reasonable pace, but the rest of the fleet will also zoom around at that pace. And if you don't have any here, 
then it will very rapidly decline to 2.27, which means that it will take a while for it to get anywhere. Especially when you have other fleets moving around, or at least ships of other designs, it will have trouble keeping up and it will slow things down quite significantly. For instance, battleships have a similar issue, 266, with two afterburners on there is not great. Like again, 266 I said? Oh wow, the, the Titan is actually faster than a battleship with more afterburners on there. But yeah, uh, make sure that you spec your ships for mobility. That's usually a good idea to have. Uh, then we got our reactor boosters. If you find yourself that you don't have the right technology to boost your ships, let's say that you have an awesome ship design and you're about to feel it and you'd realize you don't have enough power. Well, let's say that we have an advanced reactor booster. We can just boost our reactor to the point that we actually have enough power, which in this case would not be enough. But zero point power would be enough in this particular case, and then uh, our reactors would be fine to use. But yeah, advanced reactors, a nice stopgap if you don't have enough um, base reactor power. Now that repair system, uh, that only a, that's a special uh, thing that is only available in distant stars. The regenerative hull tissue, which you can get for... Uh, killing amoebas and the shield capacitor which as the name already implies uh, improves shield capacity so that right there is something you want to keep in mind as well titans by itself they also get the uh, special aura effect and uh, basically you can select that and say hey i want to have uh, a titan have this effect on my fleet or any enemy fleet that we are engaging uh, a aura effect is not global to a system, it only applies to your fleet. So if you have multiple titans, make sure you spread them out to all your fleets so you have multiple effects. There is no overlap there, and that right there is important. The Destroyer, like I said, it's uh, basically a ship that can do anything when it comes to um, fast mobility. Setting it up together with Corvettes is great, they can zoom around quite rapidly. And uh, that was something you want to use. The cruiser is in a bit of a rough spot. Uh, before, once battleships come out, they are basically useless. But before that, they can be relatively quick, having uh, two advanced afterburners on that. And can be used as fast support ships. Uh, it's sometimes nice to have some uh, large weapons on there to engage as enemy uh, stations. So having a group of these floating around and knocking down enemy stations and taking territory is quite nice. But once again, once battleships come on the field, they I don't feel they're all that use, uh, useful. The battleship itself has a, is a special case. Before you, uh, when you first start out in the game, uh, you only have access to these three which is just your standard weapon systems that have their own ranges and stuff like that. And once you get your first XL weapon, you can start mounting an XL spinal mount, which are special long-range super heavy weapons that can uh, do a ton of damage and will always target the largest target available. Uh, I personally like the focused arc emitter, but of course, knowing what your enemy has and countering appropriately is, of course, important. The Titan... Again, Apocalypse only has the Perdition Beam, which shoots across the system. It's effectively a battleship with more slots and the biggest uh, middle finger gun in the game, which is rather nice, and that's pretty much it. There's, of course, also the Defense Platforms, which comes in all sorts of flavor, like the Point Defense one, the Medium Station, the Small Station, the, the Other Station. Of course, what it is, you put these as support on um, stations as well. And, of course, always build them based around the design that the enemy has and counter as such the ion cannon relatively straightforward it's a giant gun that you can build on a station it shoots across the system with its perdition beam and will knock out anything and once again the old adjective of does the armor uh, does the enemy use mostly anti-shield weapons slap on armor and vice versa slap on shields etc etc I hope that this was a uh, a, situ a a tutorial that helped a little bit when it came to it comes to designing your ships. And let's just quickly recap. Start of the game, you're only going to have a few ships, but it's very important to figure out what the enemy has, rebuild your ships, and counter them accordingly. It will help quite a lot, and especially at the start of the game. It is a huge deal that you can uh, do this. But yeah, overall, from that moment onwards, start keep on escalating with your ship designs. Go to destroyers, get them out appropriately. Hey, you want to put a couple of large guns on there? Sure, they're going to have some trouble tracking uh, these smaller crafts. We didn't talk about tracking, did we? 
Uh, we didn't. Uh, let's quickly squeeze that in at the end here. Tracking is basically the ability of a... Um, uh, of a weapon to hit something that is smaller than it. So if an enemy has a high evasion and you have terrible tracking, then there's a good chance that you will miss. Large guns have difficulty shooting small targets. That's why at the start of the game, it's usually a good idea to have a mixture of small and medium guns on your destroyers because the enemy is going to have exactly that, medium and small ships. Once they start fielding larger ships like the cruiser, then you can start slapping up uh, large weapon designs and uh, counter accordingly. But anti-corvette weapons are still relevant into the late game and you want to keep your eye on that. And uh, that was pretty much it. I think that's uh, this is pretty much uh, what you would expect from this tutorial. Uh, there's, of course, quite a lot of stuff to talk about in terms of fleet layout. And personally, there is no perfect fleet layout. The AI does like to spam sh uh, fleets that have similar numbers of ships. 16 corvettes, 16 destroyers, 16 cruisers, 16 battleships, etc, etc. There's no real perfect way to counter this. Uh, always have a ship design ready and refit your fleets appropriately and then counter the enemy where you can. I hope this was useful to you. If you like this, feel free to give it a like. And of course, uh, leave your comments below about your favorite ship designs. I'm looking forward to see uh, those ideas about ships of the line down there. But we'll see. But in the meantime, we're going to go and wrap this up here. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves. And as always, each other.